Welcome to the second Token Andy Kanji lesson. Today, we have lots of parts and radicals to learn along with our five kanji. So we're jumping right in. We're going to be covering the meaning, building blocks, writing, historical evolution, where applicable, and a story to memorize each of the following kanji. We'll also learn the parts and radicals needed for those kanji, and stick around to the end of the lesson where we'll be doing a quick quiz to help everything stick. So let's get into it. This kanji is an oddball. With two strokes that are somewhat rare, it means five. That's right, this video is also going to be mostly numbers. The official radical is two, which appears to act like a sandwich on the top and the bottom. The diagonal line and upside down flipped over L are both quite rare in my experience and are not radicals on their own, so we won't learn them separately. Five has only four strokes. Fortunately, it follows all the expected rules. We start at the top, working west-east, then north to south with the slightly diagonal line, do our funky backwards L on the side west to east and north to south in one stroke, just like in mouth actually. Finally, we finish with the bottom line of the radical for two, ending in the southeast corner. Historically, this kanji was written to look almost like an hourglass, though I don't think that was intentional nor is it particularly helpful. It also reminds me of the Roman numeral 10, which also doesn't help us at all. Unless you think of it like the Roman numeral 10 sandwiched between two, in other words, divided, thus giving us five. I just made that up on the spot. I don't know, ignore that. Because this kanji is kind of an oddball, I've blended the story with somewhat of a pictograph. Here it is. Our two fluorescent worms are challenged to create a five with two other pieces, a pole, and an L-shaped bar during a game of charades. They overshoot the mark a bit. Can you see that? There's an Arabic numeral five there, but then the worms go a little too far, and we get the kanji for five instead. Remember that now is a great time to pause the video and really try to imagine that story or to create a story of your own that will help you remember it even better. This part is an official radical and not a kanji on its own. It means pot lid. Remember, official radicals that are not kanji do not have official radicals because they are official radicals. That makes sense, right? As far as parts go, you could try to break this down into a drop and a one, but really it's just its own thing. Potlid has two strokes, and it starts at the top. Dots on top of a kanji are usually written first, so keep that in mind. We go north to south with the handle of the potlid, and then west to east for the lid itself. The official story for this is not very interesting. It's just a potlid. What we're about to do is something that we probably won't do again for a while. We're going to learn a part based on an actual kanji that we won't be learning until later in this lesson. We're doing that because the kanji for six needs this part. I considered teaching the kanji itself here, but we'd still need to talk about this part because it's written slightly different from the kanji. The kanji that this part is based on is eight. See why I'm not teaching it yet? The name we're going to use for this part is eight horses front legs, because that's what they look like to me. The front legs of a walking horse. The eight is important because the original kanji means eight. We'll get to the official radical and parts for this kanji when we cover the kanji itself. For now, let's cover how to write it. It's just two strokes. You may remember that the rule for diagonal strokes is we write the ones that go right to left first. So we start on the left stroke, drawing it top to bottom, and finish with the stroke on the right. You're going to be seeing these cute little legs a lot in the future, so let's get you the story. Eight cute little horses and their cute front legs. If you think these little guys are cute too, 
make sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss all of the other great characters and stories coming in this series. Not to mention all the videos coming that teach how to read these kanji. Which finally gets us to... 6. The official radical for 6 is... 8. The parts are potlid and 8 horses front legs. First, we draw the potlid at the top of the character, and then draw those cute horse's legs on the bottom. Finishing in the southeast as usual. Historically, this kanji hasn't changed a whole lot, although I find it super fascinating. The seal version of 6 looked a lot like 4 did at various times in history, with legs coming out of a portal in the sky. What was going on in China back then? Our story for 6 is the pot lid is on top of 6 of the horse's legs, leaving out 2 below. Like with Potlid, this is another radical that will work well as a pictograph. If you haven't guessed just from looking at it, this one is a fish hook. It's not a kanji, just a part, so there's no official radical, and its only part is itself. There's only one stroke, so we start in the north and curve back up. This kind of reminds me of the right leg from person's legs. Hmm, maybe we should have taught it there. Anyway, no complicated stories here. It's a fish hook. We take that fish hook and turn it into a seven. The official radical of seven is one. Does that mean fish hook means six? One plus six? No, that doesn't work, does it? Anyway, the parts, as you could probably tell at this point, are one and fish hook. What do these things have to do with seven? I don't know. Sorry. You'll notice that the one being drawn here is actually slanted up to the right. We still draw this west to east though, and draw our fish hook down through it. Because as you may remember, lines that go vertically through other parts are usually drawn last. Seven has an interesting historical evolution in that it used to look a lot like the kanji for ten looks now. And in more recent times, relatively that is, it was kind of like a groovy cross or a weird dagger. None of that will help you as much as this image though. We put one fluorescent worm on a fish hook and casting it, we noticed it looks like a seven. Do you see the seven? It sure looks like one to me, especially if you've ever seen fonts where there's a line through the seven. On a side note, if you're finding this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps, I think. Moving up through the numbers, we get eight. The official radical for eight is itself. The parts are just the two diagonal lines that make up eight. It's just eight, eight is its only part. The stroke order for eight is exactly the same as the radical for eight horses front legs that we learned earlier. But you'll notice one small difference. The top of the second stroke is sort of above the left stroke. And in some fonts, it's a straight line on top with an almost 90 degree turn into the downstroke. When it's a radical, the lines are next to each other and about the same size. Eight hasn't really changed much over the years, so that brings us to the story, which is exactly the same as the radical. Eight cute little horses and their cute front legs. But maybe imagine the leg in the front held up in the air a little. This is a very common radical, not kanji, that shows up in all kinds of positions in all different kanji, and it can be written at two slightly different angles. It doesn't have any particular meaning and is instead referred to as the no radical, because it looks just like the katakana no character in one of its forms. This is not a kanji, so it doesn't have an official radical. And it's its only part. On a side note, this looks a lot like the left side of person's legs, which means we probably could have included this and fishhook as parts. But I didn't really think it would help you memorize it much, so we left these until now. There's only one stroke in the no radical, 
we draw it north to south or follow the curved stroke rule and write right to left. It doesn't really make a difference which rule you choose. Same thing. In some kanji, this part will be straight on top and curve to the left from around the middle of the character. In other situations, it looks exactly like a katakana no. What's important to note is that they are the same radical. Historically, it used to have a little more wiggle in it. Our story is as follows. The katakana no likes to hang out in many places. It's nothing special. This is more so an introduction of a new recurring character, like the mouth character, than it is a story. We'll be seeing them both a lot. The next character is a kanji, but it isn't needed until much, much later in your Japanese journey. So we'll just be worrying about its radical form today. It's actually just a different form of the radical fish hook. So we call this one fish hook two. It kind of looks like a two, doesn't it? If you really try to force it in there. For the kanji version of this, the official radical is itself. But we'll worry about that when we get to it in N1. By the way, it is its only part. This character has just one unusual stroke. To me, this one looks almost more like a fish hook than fish hook one did. But anyway, we draw a straight line on top, west to east, and without lifting the writing utensil, we cut back and curve around into the hook. In the past, fish hook 2 just looked like a squiggle or backwards poorly drawn S. I think the coolest version was the Chinese bronze inscription from like 3,000 years ago. Those are the good old days. Don't pay attention to me. The story for this one is the fluorescent worm is slipping off the fish hook down to the string. Imagine the bait from Seven slipping off the top of the hook as you cast your line out into the water. But what's important is that it's still connected by just a thread. It's probably worth noting that one is not an actual part of this kanji. That'll be our little secret. Which brings us to the last actual kanji for this lesson. The number nine. The official radical for nine is our last radical. Fish hook 2, the one with the bait falling off. The parts include the no radical and fish hook 2. To me, the number 9 feels a little awkward to write. You start in the north and draw the no radical first, which is the opposite of what I would personally expect. It breaks the rule of west to east first and the rule of vertical lines cutting through a part being drawn last. Also, the fish hook two part does not curve back underneath its top line like the radical on its own does. Instead, it goes straight down at a 90 degree angle. I guess all bets are off with nines. Nine has gone through a few forms, both ones that look almost identical to the modern kanji and some that look like weird hands on a squiggly arm. I think there were aliens in ancient China. Our story is, there are nine katakana nos casting fish hooks into the pond. Which brings us to the lesson two quiz. In this section of the video, I'll show you a flashcard with the English meaning for each kanji. Pause the video when we show each card and try to remember how to write that kanji. Then write it on your hand with your finger or on a piece of paper. The best way to remember kanji that you just learned is to search your memory for the story that you used to memorize it. That might be the story that we taught you or the one that you made based on the English meaning for that kanji. Our first card is five. Next is six. Just a few more. Here's seven. And then there's eight. Finally, we have nine. Let us know how many you got right down in the comments. You can learn the next five kanji by clicking here, if the video is out already. If you don't want to wait, you can continue learning with the official level one Tokiniandi kanji flashcard deck for Anki on tokiniandi.com. We're also releasing kanji series videos early for all the members there, so check it out if you want a head start.